In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you some hidden Excel chart techniques that will make your reports stand out and draw your readers in. These techniques are often used for infographic style reports. But that's not to say you can't use them in dashboards or even PowerPoint presentations. Now to demonstrate, I'll be building this infographic on Australian Bee data. Now infographics are one-off brochure style reports that are designed to impart information quickly and clearly. They often use a combination of pictures, charts and text to tell a story that takes the reader on a journey. As you can see, this is just a regular Excel file. There's no add-in required to build an infographic in Excel. I'll rename this sheet Infographic. And the first thing I want to do is change the color theme to something in line with the theme of my infographic. And it's B, so I'm going to go with this yellow color theme. And all that's going to do is save me some time because now all my color palettes are filled with colors in line with my theme. So it'll be quick and easy for me to select them. I'm going to apply a background fill to the cells. And we're going to use this pale yellow. Now I found an image of honeycomb on pngtree.com. So I'm going to insert that. I've already saved it to my PC and it's this one here. Now it's a little bit big so I'm going to start by cropping it. So on the picture format tab I'm going to crop and we'll just reduce it down. Just dragging the pull handles. Okay let's reposition it to the top of the page and I'm going to copy it by holding down control and then I'm going to hold down shift that'll just keep it horizontally aligned and now it fills the space of my header. We need to correctly attribute it to pngtree.com so I'll just make a note of that here and we'll just make it a little bit smaller and apply a brown font just to make it a little bit more subtle. Next I'll insert a text box to store my header in for the infographic. So this is Australian honeybees and let's format the font. We'll make it 80 point and we can choose from various fonts and you can see as you go through it gives you a little preview. I know the one that I want it's called curls and it says on here. Let's format it brown and we'll just center the font in the text box and now I can go ahead and hide the text box by getting rid of the fill and the outline. So there's my header it's all done just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see more of the screen. Let's have a look at the data. Now the first chart I want to insert is a donut chart that shows the commercial honey production by state in Australia. And we'll go to the insert tab and then under the pie chart we've got donut here. Let's just apply some formatting. So I'll start with making the whole size smaller. So control one to open the formatting pane. It's over here on the right so I'm just going to drag it over beside the chart and I want the explosion to be 8% and the whole size to be 50. Now with the donut selected I'm going to go ahead and apply some outlines in this brown color and I want it to have a sketched look so we're going to apply the sketch format it just gives it a bit more of a hand-drawn effect and adds some interest to the chart. Now normally I'd limit pie or donut charts to three slices but these segments are quite easily distinguished by size and with infographics the visual appeal of a graphic holds more weight than in a dashboard report where you want your users to be able to interpret the data at a glance. So we can have a little bit more fun with the infographics. I'm going to get rid of the legend and instead add data labels. Let's just go into more options and then in here I'm going to include the category name. I don't want the leader lines. And instead of having a comma separator, I'm going to put it onto a new line. And then unfortunately with donut charts, there's no setting to put the labels outside. So you have to left click and drag them out manually one by one. Another reason not to have too many segments in your charts. Okay, with the outside of the chart selected, I'm going to go and do the font formatting. So I want it all in the brown font. And I'm going to use this Zilla Slab Semi Bold. It's one I've used earlier, so it's in my recently used fonts. And with that done, I'm going to Control X to cut it. And then I'm just going to paste it in here on my infographic. 
So let's make it a bit bigger. I've got plenty of space. Give the chart a title, commercial honey production in tons. And let's make the font bigger. You can also make this font for the labels bigger. And I don't want the border or the fill on the chart. So let's go ahead and we'll set it to no fill and no outline. I've got the individual values for each state, but I'd like to also include a total. So I'm just going to add a text box here. With the outer edge of the text box selected in the formula bar type equals. And then I'm going to go to the data tab and pick up the value. Press enter. And there it is in the text box. Let's give it some formatting. So we'll just center it first of all. And we'll make the font bigger. And let's go with the theme font of the Zilla Slab. And we'll make it brown. Let's just center that text box. And then we can go ahead and get rid of the fill and the outline. So there's the first chart done. Let's go ahead and insert the pie chart next, which is showing the proportion of honey produced by land type. So I'm going to insert pie chart and I'm just going to cut this out straight away. Control X and place it on the dashboard here. Let's make it bigger to fit in in line with the donut. Now I want most of the formatting that I have on the donut chart also on the pie chart. So I'm just going to copy the donut with the outer edge of the chart selected. Click on the pie chart and then paste special formats. Now this is going to change it to a donut, but we'll change it back. Don't worry. But notice it's already applied all of the formatting that I want. We'll go into chart design, change chart type, and we'll make it a pie. Now I need to set the pie explosion. So with it selected on the series options, I want to set the explosion here to 5%. That just gives the hand drawn lines some space. Let's fix the location of the data labels. So we're going to set them to outside the end and let's just make this one wider so it doesn't wrap onto three lines and that'll just allow it to sit closer to the chart. We'll give the chart the title honey produced by land type. You might need to tweak the position of the labels or even possibly make the chart a little bit smaller just to give them space. Okay, so that's the first two charts done. I'll just scroll down. The next chart I need is the bar chart. And that's going to plot this data here, the number of beekeepers and the number of hives. Now it's actually two charts, one for the beekeepers and one for the hives. I've plotted the hives as negative values so that they sit on the left hand side of the axis. So I'm just going to insert them one at a time. So insert bar. And then let's do this one. I don't want the labels here. I just want the bars. So I'm just going to insert the bar without the labels selected. And then notice the hives sit on the left side with the beekeepers on the right. So I'm just going to format one chart and then I'm going to copy the formats again. So with it selected, I don't want grid lines. I want data labels. Let's select the bars and go ahead and change the gap width just to make them thicker. So I'll give it 50% gap width. I don't need the horizontal axis because I have data labels. So let's remove that. Now, although it's not necessary to add some interest, we can color each bar separately. I wouldn't recommend this in a business dashboard unless you're carrying the color coding of the different states through to other charts. To color code each bar separately, select them once by left clicking and then left click again once to select the bar you want to color. And then on the formatting, I can go in and change the fill. So I'm just going to use these colors at the top of my color palette. And what have we got? A red color. We don't quite have enough colors for all of the bars from the top. So for this last one for Northern Territory, I'm going to shade it with this lighter color orange. All right. Now I need to add the outline in brown and we'll give it the sketched effect. Let's set the font. So brown might make it a bit bigger and we'll use the Zilla Slab semi bold. This font can be bigger as well because it's the title. And lastly, I'm going to get rid of the fill and the outline on the chart. Okay. So that's that one done with it selected on the outside. I'm going to control C to copy. And then I'm going to paste special formats. Let's 
select them both and Control X to cut them out and we'll paste them in here where we can see them better. Now when you copy the format for some reason it doesn't get rid of the fill in the plot area. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. I still have the vertical axis in here for the number of hives. So let's go ahead and we'll hide the labels. So we'll set them to none. And I need to fix the number formatting here so that they're not showing as negatives. So with them selected, I want the number to be a custom format. And I've already set it up in here, but basically the way formats work is the first format before the semicolon is the positive values. The second format is the negative values. And then we have zero and text. In this case, I'm only formatting positive and negatives. So all I've done is remove the minus sign from the negative value so that both positive and negative values are formatted in the same way. Okay, we can make this chart a bit bigger. In fact, we can make them both a bit bigger vertically as well. And then the last chart I need is a column chart for my beekeeper clubs and members. So I'm going to select the data, insert column chart. Now you'll notice that it's plotted the year as a series and obviously that's not correct. So right click, select data and we'll remove the year and edit the horizontal axis labels, which should be the year values. So that's fixed that. Let's get rid of the grid lines. We'll add the legend to the top instead of the bottom. And then the next thing I want to do is because the members values are tiny, I'm going to change the chart type. So let's change chart type and we'll go with a combo chart and we'll have the clubs as a cluster column and the members as a line chart on the secondary axis. Now I want to add data labels for the columns. So let's do that, data labels, and we'll put them inside the base. Let's fix these columns because they're a bit narrow. So we'll change the gap width to 50%. And I don't want this vertical axis now because I have labels, so I don't need that as well. So let's go and hide the labels to none and I still have this vertical line here, so let's go and hide that, put the line as no line. All right, let's make the chart a bit bigger. It's going to have plenty of space. We'll move the legend up here and the chart title across to the left. So this is New South Wales Amateur Beekeepers, Clubs and Members. Let's change the color of these columns so that they're in line with our theme. We'll make it yellow. That contrasts better with the line. I'm also going to make the line smooth and we'll add the outline and make it sketched. Okay, nearly there. Let's go ahead and make the font brown and we'll change it to Zilla Slab and we can probably make it a bit bigger as well, especially this one, which can be much bigger. All right, let's get rid of the shape fill on the chart and the outline and control X and place it on the infographic. You see we've got loads of room to play with here. Make it wider. All right. One last thing I want to do is just clarify what this vertical axis is for. So we can do that by giving it a title. So this is members and that just makes it easier to interpret. Okay, now the charts are complete, we can add some more interest to the infographic with icons and images. Excel has a load of free icons and images available on the Insert tab and then Icons. You need to be connected to the internet for it to get them though. So all you need to do is search for a term or you can scroll through or look by category. I'm going to look for bees. There's one there. And let's also look for honey. There's some honey and a beehive. And I also want something that represents a meeting for my members data. So we've got four images there. I'm going to insert those. Let's just bring them up towards the top and make them a bit bigger. All right, the first one I want is this pot of honey. And I'm just going to place it in here. We'll change the fill color to a paler color. We can also make it transparent. It's sitting in front of the charts though, so let's just send it back so that the chart data is sitting in front of it. All right, so that's the one that represents the honey. 
Let's move the hive down here. We can make it a bit bigger and it can fill this space. Let's give it a color of gold and also give it some transparency just to wash it out and make it less dominating. All right, scrolling down to the club section. This is my club image. Let's make this shade of brown and the bee can come over here. He's a bit big, so we'll make him smaller. Maybe tip him on an angle and we'll make him yellow. Actually, I'm going to copy the bee over here and we'll make him much smaller, maybe 0.75 and he can sit on the desk at the meeting. All right. Now the last image I have is this map of Australia. I actually created this using hexagon shapes. So what I did was insert the shape and down here I've got the hexagon and I drew it in and then I copied it. And if I select this on the shape format tab, I can ungroup them. You'll see how many times I copied it loads of times. So it was a bit of a labor of love. I'm going to control Z to undo that. And then I color coded each state in line with the number of beekeeper values. So Victoria and New South Wales have about the same, then Queensland, then WA, South Australia, and Tasmania and Northern Territory, very low. So instead of recreating that, I'm just going to copy that for now and put it in here and we'll move it into place. It's a bit big. All right. You could also use a map chart. There is a map chart up here, but I liked the hexagons. I thought they were a bit more interesting in keeping with the bee theme and honeycomb. So there's my infographic. Let's just minimize the ribbon and I also get rid of the headings in the formula bar just to give it a bit more space on my monitor. So you can see it there. I'll zoom out a little more. So there you have a load of techniques for building infographics in Excel using images, icons, charts, and these cool sketch effects on the charts to make it a little bit more interesting. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file containing the completed infographic from this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.